What's up, everybody? I'm Lynn Williams. And I'm Sam Mewis, and this is Snacks, where we typically talk about some personal stuff, some soccer stuff, some real stuff, and some fun stuff. But today, since Lynn and I have been at camp with the U.S. Women's National Team for the past week, we are going to switch things up a bit. (laughs) So today, we are going to have some random Halloween theme extravaganza. (laughs) It's going to be very Halloween-y. This is the spooky episode. (laughs) Do you have a favorite Halloween experience? Uh, Yeah, I love doing like haunted hay rides. Ooh, yeah. Okay. I I love being like scared but laughing. Okay. Like a haunted house. Like I would love to go to a haunted house and just have somebody jump out and grab me and be like <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever do like corn mazes when you were younger? Like that well, kind of thing or no? My like actual memory of this, there's a haunted house in on the South Shore where I grew up that like it was like the big deal to go. Like you'd go and be like, "Mom, can I go to Barrett's?" and you'd like go with a group of friends. And it was like, it was like, it was like expensive and you had to wait in a long line. And then the whole thing lasted for like three minutes, but it was like really scary in that, like, um, just like adrenaline and like being terrified thing. And then when I was even younger than that, one of my like good friends always had a big like Halloween party Mm. and the, the parents would load up. I don't even know what it was, if it was just a pickup truck, but it felt like a hayride. Maybe they just attached a wagon to a tractor. I have no idea, but this kid lives like two miles away from me. He was like my good friend. And we would load up on the hayride and they would drive us through the woods around the back of the house and other parents would be back there with like chainsaws. Yeah, that's so fun. And they would like chase us through the woods and we would all be like sitting on the hayride, like screaming, dressed up. Like it was, it was so fun. And we would do like the string, like donut thing. Yeah. It was like the best. I, I don't know why, but like Halloween is just like my shit. Maybe it's because you're born in October. It probably has something to do with that. Yeah. Um, when I was little, I, so I grew up on 10 acres, you know that. And on a pecan farm. On a pecan farm. Um, but one year I convinced my uh, mom and dad to have like a giant Halloween party with me and my sister. And so it was like. Just you two? Well, or did you invite we friends? Invited, we invited friends, but my friends and her friends. Um, okay. And so we all got dressed up and all these dads like volunteered and dressed up as like haunted people. And they were like all throughout the the like farm, the orchard and like in the house. And it was so fun. But these poor dads got so beat up. I'm pretty sure somebody punched a dad and then another girl like peed her pants. And I was like, I don't know if you guys are having fun anymore, but I was having a blast. (laughs) That's really funny. I know. In like those haunted houses, there is like a thing that you can't, they can't like touch you. But I don't think you don't, when you're so scared, you don't realize that. So I can definitely see punching somebody in the face. Yeah. You're just like, ah, natural reaction, pow. I know. Um, what's like the favorite, your favorite costume you've ever worn? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, ooh. I remember when I was little, I was like a cow for like three years straight. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure I love that. Um, my mom would like make our costumes when we were little. And I was like a corpse bride, which was so fun. <laughs> But I would probably have to say the cow. I mean, I wore that thing for three years. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's fair. You know, Abby Dahlkemper always says she was a pumpkin for like so, like just a classic in the pumpkin, (laughs) like the fat thing for like so many years, like into when you were trying to dress cute, like she would just still be a pumpkin. (laughs) That's amazing. Um, What about yours? Mine? I think mine, uh, Finn's getting the zoomies right now. So he's going to probably be an active participant in the rest of this. It's okay. Um, I think my favorite was in college, Rosie and I dressed up as mimes. Oh, that's funny. And it was like actually so cute and cool. And like it wasn't like um scandalous by any means. Like yeah. we had on like little striped shirts and like little suspenders, but like we looked cute and had like face paint on and stuff and it was like really fun. That's amazing. What is Finn going to be? I know. Be? Well, we're going to get to 
uh, later in this episode some of Wilma's Halloween yeah. costumes, but I do not have anything for Finn yet. I need to go to the Halloween store or maybe just look online because like he's got to be some stores anymore. Um, I don't have a dog, but I have nephews and a niece. And last Halloween, I tried to convince my nephews to be um, Hercules. And I was like, Tuta, my brother-in-law, you can be Hercules and Jordan can be Meg. It'll be cute, father, daughter. Je- mm-hmm. Me and Jessica will be the muses. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, the boys can be those little evil devil things. Uh huh. And then and then Vita, the youngest boy, can be Hades. And I was like, this is gonna okay. be amazing. This is gonna be so fun. And they shot me down so fast. Not my sister. My sister was so on board, but the boys, they were like, no, I'm not doing that. And I was like, why are you so mean to me? And you know no, what they're I'm gonna be? Win. Jordan wants to be a ghost, so that's lame. And Vita wants to be Miles Spider Man again. I was like, why? Why are you crushing my dreams? I mean, you'll have to just hold it over their head until they get older, and they're so mean. Then to you me. can. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, Lynn. You're it's not okay. a. You're not a. They're not thinking about you as the cool aunt yet. Except when they want gifts. Yeah. Then they want to come. To Maybe me. you could gift them all the costumes. Hmm. Maybe and they would. The, the, I don't know. Literally throw them away. So, do you know what you're going to be this year if they are doing things without you? Um. Well, we're going to be in Portland. Um. And I have no idea yet. Mm-hmm. I have thought about being um, the people from Squid Game. Have you been watching that? No, but I, it's the talk of the town, so I'm going to probably watch it soon. I, I can't watch it. I put it on for five minutes, and I was like, this is too much for me. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to give it another chance. And then I turned it off after two minutes. I was like, I, I can't watch this. But Maybe I not. might be that. Or or um, Mary wanted to be the people from Moulin Rouge. Oh. So that could be fun. I don't know. What are you going to be? Do you have any suggestions? Well... I don't have any suggestions for you, no. Sorry. I have suggestions for myself. I kind of want to be Scooby-Doo and the gang. That's amazing. Where, Fit, where like, Finn is Scooby-Doo. And, and you like and Pat, Pat are the gang. And me and Pat and Brandon could be in the gang. And then we probably need, like, another... Do we, would we need another girl? I'm mixing up the Magic School Bus people, I think, with the gang. With the Scooby-Doo gang. You need two girls. Two girls and two boys? I think so. So, yeah, I mean, I think I probably could. I hope I could find another girl to be my friend and be with me think, on Halloween. I think you can find that. Well, I, I mean, I, could, I might be here and I also might be elsewhere. So I, it's tough really to say. But I think I do like the idea of Finn being Scooby-Doo. He's such a little scoop. He is a little scoop. He's, Every like, time, he's like a little scoop. Every time I see him, I am like shocked at how small he is. I know. It's almost like I, I just teared up thinking about <laughs> Because it's almost like he could be like a little sc- I'm crying. Yeah, you. this is wild. It's almost this like he could be like scrappy do. You literally have tears in your eyes. She is wiping tears away from her eyes. I know. That is pure love. Pure. Oh my God. Love. Um, oh. But it's just, it would just be so funny, I think, to just be Scoobs in the gang. I think you should do it. <sighs> you better, you got it together. <laughs> Gotta get it together, yeah. Um, okay, well, another fun thing is I have the pumpkin still. Oh, my God. Can you show us? Yes, one sec. All right, I'm going to start telling the story. Okay. Okay, so when Lynn and I first started living together in 2017... We, I obviously I love the fall, so like probably on September 1st, I went and got a, a little like plasticky kind of pumpkin situation just as a decoration for our coffee table. It was like our only decoration we ever bought. And then we kept it. So at, you have to, I know that sounds crazy that it's a big deal that we kept it, but we move in and out of apartments literally every year. So in 2017, we packed up the apartment and threw away a bunch of stuff, donated a bunch of stuff. 
put everything in a storage unit and then moved back in in 2018. And we did the same thing literally every single season that we lived together because you just, until re- more recently, people weren't keeping their apartments in the off season. But every time we went to donate stuff and throw stuff away, we kept, we chose to keep this pumpkin. So this pumpkin has survived like five off season moves and Lynn still has it. Oh, and it's just like a shitty plastic pumpkin plastic pumpkin i know do you just remember though like we would move and then we'd be like where's our cups because we yeah. like had thrown away cups so we need to go get more cups or we'd be like we don't have any silverware we like needed things that we would throw away but we decided to keep yeah. this stupid pumpkin <laughs> like i probably bought five shower curtains like we just didn't we didn't keep essentials we kept the one decoration that is a pumpkin and we still have it and now it's our love pumpkin. Our love pumpkin. Are you really going to... I was just thinking of that sisterhood of the traveling pumpkin. <laughs> um, you know when uh, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days and she goes, Our love fur! Yeah. You let it die! I know. I know. All I can think of... Anytime I see this pumpkin, all I think about is it being on our coffee table with a bowl of candy corn. Yep. But we would put out the bowl of candy corn, and then the next day we would have to go get another bowl of candy corn. I know, I know. And then we would have to, like, three days in, we were like, okay, we can't put the candy corn on the table anymore. So then we would, like, put it far away, but then that yeah. would be gone too. So, yeah, candy corn's the kind of thing that you, once you have one, you eat the whole bag, but then yeah. you, like, feel sick. So it's yeah. like, you know, going into it, you're like, just don't have one. And then as soon as you have one, it's like, all right, I'm going to feel ill in 20 minutes yeah and then but then you get over that illness quickly and then you're like okay I can have more and then you get ill again it's just it's yeah. just endless yeah um what was the last scary movie you've watched oh that's a good question too um I can't remember because I live alone and I don't like doing that because I'm gonna have nightmares but I think the last time I watched a Halloween movie, it was with you, and it was Hocus Pocus, and it was the time of my life. It It's the best. It's just the best. Yeah. I, you know what I'm all about is just create, like, remember how I used to always be like, let's make cinnamon buns and watch Vampire yeah. Diaries. Like, I pair a food with an activity and just <laughs> make it into, like, a whole scene, and I feel yeah. like Hocus Pocus or Halloween Town and, like, In the Fall is, like, the perfect thing to do that with. It it's just like such a vibe. You light a pumpkin candle, you turn off the lights, yeah. you know? Yeah, and then it's also like, you know those little desserts that we used to make that'd be like apples or berries with like a crumble on yeah. top? Like it's just a perfect fall Halloween treat as well. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> you do not have to tell me. Okay. Um. Oh, I watched the other night this movie called Hereditary with Pat. Have you heard? It's called Hereditary. I watched it with Pat. Um, you don't say. Yeah. Uh, it was good. It was scary. It was like uh, out there, but it was definitely creepy. And the whole, like, I, I remember we came in to go to bed and I had to go get a glass of water and I was like scared. Like I didn't want to go. Yeah. Because the girl in it would do this thing. The girl who was like kind of possessed by something, I won't give it away, would go like this. No. And so I was out in the kitchen getting my glass of water, like a little bit, like, ooh, I gotta run like and get the ice back machine in the room. is like going. And I kept being like, what if you just heard, like, no. what would you do? You'd scream. Do you, did you have like a scary movie, like growing up as a kid, where you're like, that scary movie got me? Well, I was like so sheltered as a kid. Like, I didn't watch a PG 13 movie until I was like 15. <laughs> So, like, we, like, were not watching scary movies, but I also was, like, scared of everything. Like, I didn't, sometimes I didn't sleep. Like, I was so scared of getting kidnapped. I had nightmares. Like, I, obviously, I'm a high-maintenance adult, so obviously I was probably a pretty high-maintenance child when it comes to, like, stress. (laughs) That's probably what caused your stress. Do you have Uh, one? Yeah. So, the way my childhood home was set up, like, my parents' room was, like, on this side of the house, and then there was, like, a long hallway, and then we were on this side. But mm-hmm. then there was, like, this, like, bonus room next to their room. And so it was me, my sister, and my cousins, and we decided to watch this movie Darkness Falls, which mm. is about an evil tooth fairy. And it was mm. around the time that I was losing teeth. 
<gasps> and so you were that so, young and you watched a scary movie yeah i don't know i don't know what was happening well you had was, yeah you had an, you had an older sister so yeah yeah so we so we watch a scary movie and it's basically like if you lose a teeth a tooth if you lose the, if you lose a teeth <laughs> if you lose a tooth the tooth fairy kills you <gasps> but but if um but like there's a way to get out of it like sh- the tooth fairy can't go into the light and so mm. but if you see her if they like make eye contact she'll haunt you for life so i just remember like all the time going from like my mom and dad's room to my room i would sprint down the hallway <laughs> yeah. quickly turn on all the lights and then jump into bed and then yeah. naturally because the bed was safe because i couldn't whatever's underneath the bed but i just remember being like ah and like screaming yeah. and turning on the lights yeah that was like the worst yeah. mistake of my life i i know like the exact feeling you're talking about i this was either from a goosebumps episode or oh. this episode of what was like the dog there was a dog tv show and there was this i forget what it was called wishbone wishbone oh okay yeah 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 okay and so i don't know which it, which this is from but it was basically this like basement door and uh-huh. the very end of the episode or whatever the eyes you just saw the eyes and then you were like yeah. oh my god they're they're in for you it like they're me. still gonna yeah. be haunted like but it was just the ep- an episode of a tv show that was like trying to be like spooky but i the way my house was set up if i had to go to the bathroom upstairs i had to look down the stairs Oh. Yeah. Like the the bathroom door is at the top of the stairs. So I would not look, but then when I'd open the door to go back to my room, I'd ha- I'd see down the stairs and every time I thought the eyes were just going to be there. <laughs> um when you used to go trick or treating as a kid, was there a house that would give out king size candy bars? Yeah, there was like this neighborhood. Um so like I lived pretty far away from any neighbors so i would always go to my <laughs> go to my friend's house um and then there was this neighborhood called van s or the street with like big houses and we would go there and they would get like you're like we're going to van s we're getting those candy bars nice yeah we have like, who who gives out raisins if you give out raisins you know my me. friend you're yeah. dead to me yeah um we had one too but the driveway was super long So it was was just like the long driveway house, but it was actually like super long. It's probably way shorter than I'm remembering, but it was almost like people wouldn't go down it because it was so long Mm. that they'd give out king size candy bars and they had like such a cool yard. But again, I'm probably really elevating everything in my imagination because I haven't been in 15 years. I've been trigger treating. <laughs> I've been trigger treating a couple times now that I have nieces and nephews and it's like a different experience than I remember it being and also like thinking about it it's kind of creepy you're just like you don't know these people you're going up to their houses asking for candy (sighs) yeah I mean yeah I also feel like the world is just different kind of different is it I don't know I don't know as you know I am not a great decorator I think I have interior design taste and then I get something and I look at it and it looks so stupid and I either return it or fold it up and put it away in the closet embarrassed that I ever thought this would look good so I noticed a few weeks ago all my neighbors have cute little pumpkins out on their front steps yeah so I go and I buy two pumpkins they're the exact same size they don't look good on the front steps. Let me tell you, do I do one on one step and one below it? No, they're the exact same size. It's a, it's also like an even number, so it's not looking Yeah, you should have got three. Yep, I know that now. Haven't come across any more pumpkins lately, so I got a flower pot at a different store of mums. Okay. Mums are the, apparently, my, mom, my mother told me this, the fall flower. Good a time. flower pot of mums. Now there's mums and then the two pumpkins. Doesn't look good. I try one on the other side of the steps. Still, nothing looks good. Nothing, Literally, nothing looks good. My mom brings me more moms. And so now I have four things out on the steps. And it looks dumb. Literally, no matter what combination of things, of decorations, I hung a wreath on the door. I got a new doormat. It still looks dumb. I literally have no well, you decorative get, touch. Did the doormat match, like, a fall theme? Yeah, it's beautiful. 
What what does that mean? What is it? It's beautiful. It's it's just brown with a little bit of like a tree on it. Sam, you told me <laughs> you with your your herb doormat that that was your favorite thing you owned. It was. That was my favorite thing I owned. I had this <gasps> this beautiful doormat. I'm gonna give doormat. it back because I have it still. Oh my god! I'm so glad somebody has it. And then we didn't throw it away. I had this beautiful doormat that has lavender on it and time time it's so Mint. cute for me it's from anthropology you you <laughs> okay well it sounds like you need to go get more pumpkins and like different colors so like a gourd a gourd you want to know what i want what is it want, called con- a gourd right a gourd yeah confession what i was looking at was like a stand-up scarecrow type of situation okay you can get that you can also if you're into like halloween theme get a spider web or a, a skeleton or some fall looking leaves. I would like, I think, to get a skeleton and sit it down on a little stool next to the door. Okay, it can drinking have its a hand cup, on your drink pumpkin. It, drinking a little cup of coffee. <laughs> um, have you decorated the inside of your house? Um, a little bit, yeah. I bought a bag of mini pumpkins and they are dispersed throughout as one would expect a fall obsessed lady to do. Um, and then the mantle just has like mini pumpkins and like a little mm. um, mantle leaf situation. It looks cute. It's all right. And we have what pumpkin candles, obviously. What is that called? A, a garland. Garland. A garland. Uh, um, you should do that on your like dining table too, and put like candles. That's a good idea. Currently, the dining table is home to my backpack and some mail and probably some dishes. That doesn't surprise me at all. And probably some keys and a hat. You know us so well. (laughs) Like the back of my hand. You know us so well. Pat, you remember how I always used to put all of Pat's belongings in his hat just to organize them in one place? It would be phone, wallet, keys in the hat. Yeah. I'm sure he appreciated that. I Probably not. He was probably like, I put the headphones over there for a reason. You're like, what is the reason? Okay, Pat. (laughs) You're a lunatic. Oh, shoot. What a guy. Okay, well, hopefully uh, our listeners didn't mind that that was just us babbling about random Halloween memories and stuff. I mean, I hope everybody loves Halloween. It's Halloween time. Um, I think people should, this is an ad lib. Is that what it's called? I don't know. That people should tweet at us um, what their favorite Halloween movie is. Ooh, I would love that. Or their favorite Halloween treat. So then we can try it. Okay, so now we had the chance to sit down with our other good friend, Rose Lavelle, and we talked about soccer, books that we can't tell you about, and most importantly, Wilma's Halloween costumes. All right, the time is here, everyone, for this week's guest, OL Reign midfielder and member of the U.S. Women's National Team. Please welcome Rose Levine. That's That's Rose Levine. For short, welcome to the show, Rose. Or Scrooge. Thank you. Or, or Rand. I've never called Ooh. you that. Made it up. <laughs> Made I it up her- right now. <laughs> Randall. I've called her Randall, but not Rand. Oh, Hi, I like Rose. Randall. Thanks. Do you want a nickname? Another one? Yeah, right now. First thing you think of. Salamander. Scramantha Bananthas. Scramantha Bananthas. <laughs> I have a funny story about Samantha Bananthas, but I'm not going <laughs> to. What? We'll tell you off, Erlyn. Anyways, Rose, welcome to the show. First things first. <laughs> How's Wilma? She's so good. I got her Halloween costumes. That was going to be um, one of my questions. Well, what? Oh, what really? is it? Sorry. Oh, she has a lot. Oh. She has a lot. Okay, start telling us. Okay. Um. She has an octopus, um, <laughs> a peacock, um, a like fifties girl, you know those pink poodle skirts, Very um, cute. an alligator, a male man. Does she have a Halloween party to go to? No, no. Um, is she just? Is this going to be like the twelve days of Halloween? I don't know. Whatever um, she wants. The she has like it's called a holy hound. 
like a Pope costume. Uh, and then I just ordered her Ariel and a Stegosaurus. Oh, she, I could see her pulling that off in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big Halloween for her. Yeah. I'm very excited for her. Rose, where did your love for dogs come from, do you think? Just from growing up with your dog? Yeah, I think probably just from growing up with my pug, with my my former sister. Yeah. Oh. Your late sister. <laughs> my late sister. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Sam. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm crying. Um, okay, well, that was an uncomfortable um, moment. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rose, can you please tell our listeners about the story of when you and Sam found that dog on the street? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, it's going to paint Sam as an enemy. <laughs> No, as the villain. just be a little bit nice about it. I, actually, why don't I just tell it so that you don't no, spread lies no. about me? Okay, go ahead. No, I'll tell the very unbiased. Me and Sam, it was when we were, in, we were playing a game in Houston. I think maybe it was qualifiers. And we're on our way to the coffee shop driving. And we're on this very busy road. Very busy. And we see this dog running on the sidewalk, clearly lost. Like, it's cle- it has no owner running on a sidewalk. And I am like, Sam, pull over. Like, we need to get this dog. And Sam was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, and like, because to be fair, there are hundreds of people driving by this dog. I have, in my lifetime, have never been the person who stops to help. I learned a valuable lesson on this day. Rose, continue. Yeah, so in my lifetime, I have always been the person. <laughs> like, if I, <laughs> if I see a stray dog, I'm hopping out of the car and I'm going to try with all of my might to catch it and return it to its owner. So after fighting with Sam for probably five minutes, I eventually get her to pull the car over. And then um, <laughs> Sam is driving slowly behind me while I'm jogging down the sidewalk <laughs> trying to catch the dog. <laughs> And we caught it. And we then did. We returned it, and we returned it to its owner. And we probably saved its life because it, it was on the busiest, yeah. probably the busiest road in Houston. So dare what, I say. like, what did the owner say? Like, they were like, oh my gosh. Well, they were kind of like, yeah. Was it a boy or a girl, Rose? Do you remember? I think it was a boy. So the owner was kind of like, yeah, he does this all the time. Like, thanks. And was like very chill about it. And I like wanted a trophy because this was like my first dog recapture savior. And they were kind of, like, chill about it. I actually feel like in my experience of capturing stray dogs, <laughs> um, that that seems like that's the case a lot of times. Um, because I feel like maybe they don't, like, see all the work that goes into, <laughs> goes into it. And, like, all of the, like, danger that the dog was in. Yeah, So then sometimes fair. I feel like a couple times I've returned dogs. There was one time... I returned this dog. It was me and my best friend Jody. Jody. It was also during the dead of winter. Yeah. <laughs> it was during we'll get the to dead that. of we'll winter. We'll get to the cousin thing. Go ahead. Yeah. And we chased this dog around for like literally an hour. And it was like a little white crusty dog. So it was like hard to see in the snow. And we chased it around for an hour until we finally ca- captured it. We took it to the police to see if there's a chip called the um, SPCA. And there was nothing. So then we drove around the neighborhood for another two hours asking people if they, like, recognize this dog. And then eventually we found the owner probably after three hours of turmoil. And the owner was so mad at the dog, but, like, clearly didn't know all the, all the hard work that went into saving his life. You're a wow. savior. A saint, if I, you will. I know. I kind of feel like you need to get a holy costume to go along with Wilma as, like, the dogs, the dog savior yeah how many dogs do you think you've saved in your time oh not th- i mean 10 yeah maybe 10 wow well i've only saved one <laughs> um okay rose this was this is just the intro so this is a, okay. another another good question we feel like one of your favorite things to ask people is what their most embarrassing moment is everybody already knows mine because i have shared it very publicly if you don't 
do a quick Google. <laughs> Lynn, do we know yours? And Rose, I don't think I've ever heard you share one. You've definitely heard mine, but I, I mean, I have no issue sharing it again. Oh, and Lynn, okay. will Hold you on. share one as well? I like have to think of one. Like I don't have okay. one moment that sticks out, but I'm sure I have a bunch. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> wow. Rose, why don't okay. you go first while Lynn thinks? Okay, um, it was in sixth grade, and me, <laughs> me and Jody were um, we always would bike to this little strip mall by her house. Oh, yeah. and yeah, you have heard this. I do. I know it. I do know it. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> and we'd always pass these kids that were around our age every time and we'd always have some kind of interaction with them and so on our way back we're biking and i'm biking along and we pass the kids and i'm in front i'm leading me and jody and when i when jody bikes past these kids they hold up a golf club and look like they're about to hit her so <laughs> i'm on my bike and i'm like this i'm like oh my gosh, like looking at the drama, like what's going on? And then I smack into a parked car (laughs) and I was so embarrassed because obviously the boys start just like laughing their heads off at me. I was so embarrassed. So I take a couple steps forward. I'm like looking to the sky. can't make eye contact with anyone because I'm embarrassed. And it really hurt. Like my knee broke the impact, not the bike. So then... Me and Jody hopped back on the bike. Well, Jody was already on hers, but I hopped back on my bike and I pushed to go off. And I realized that not only did I hurt my knee, but upon impact, the bike chain broke. But like I was too embarrassed to show that I'm in pain and I broke my bike. So I just pushed off as hard as I could and fake (laughs) rode my bike until I got around the corner and had to walk the bike home. Poor Rose. So why why did they raise the golf club? No idea. Just no to idea. be, you know, I saw my best kids. friend in danger. Swiveled my head. How's your knee hit now? A car. I feel it every day. Hmm. Stuck yeah. with you until now. Exactly. That's a tough well, one. Well, let's hear That's a tough one, Rose. I'm so sorry that happened mm-hmm. to you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't have one moment where I'm like, that was that embarrassing that it stuck with me for life. I feel like it's that's just because you're, like, so cool. Lynn, we could tell Pat's in, in place of yours if you want. Please. I, I'm not say. that cool. I'm not that cool, <laughs> first of all. I just, like, I know I have one. I just have suppressed it so deep into my brain that I can't think of it. That's oh, that's okay. actually fair. That's actually fair. I, I can, think Pat already Pat left. Pat allowed to come in I, and- I think he's already gone. It's okay. It's 4-17. Okay, well, say it for him. Rose, do you want to tell it? You are the guest. Oh, it's just so much funnier if Pat tells it. I'm not going to tell it funny. But... Oh, that's Brandon. Bummer. Does Brandon Does he have it? one? I don't think he's going to tell it on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, maybe me and Rose can uh, split it. Pat was in kindergarten, very early, traumatizing, oh, uh, early, embarrassing moment. And <laughs> the teacher's aide, like, so it, I don't know if everybody has this, but Pat's teacher was in the classroom, but then another teacher or teacher's aide or somebody came in the classroom and opened the door and said, hey, Pat, can I talk to you out in the hallway for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> so Pat goes, okay. And he gets up and he walks out the door and he goes to talk to the teacher in the hallway. And then he gets out there and the teacher goes, Oh, honey, like, I meant Pat, like, the teacher. Like, I guess Pat's teacher's name was also Pat. (laughs) And so Pat just, Rose, do you want to say how Pat responded? He just went, okay. (laughs) But he says he remembers feeling, like, like shame as a kindergartner walking back in, like, true embarrassment that he thought she was talking to him, and he went out there, and so he just goes, okay. (laughs) Okay. And he That's tells so it with like, sad. yeah, he tells it with like, you can really tell it like it hurt him. It cut him deep. Yeah. He That's thinks about so it every sad. day. Classic mistake <laughs> though. Honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Oh. oh. I'm so sad that he couldn't be the one to recount the story. Oh, no, it's a real bummer, but he, he looks like he has gone and left for work. Um, okay. So Rose, we have a whole segment in here about 
Cincinnati. Cincinnati. So, why are you so proud to be from Cincinnati? Um... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just obsessed with it. Cincinnati is one of those places that, like, when you grow up there, you never leave. So, like, my all of my aunts and uncles still live there. And all I your have, cousins. Like, a million of them. All of my cousins. We all went to the same high school. Um, well, all the girls went to the same high school. All the boys went to the same high school. Um, and that's how everyone is. Like, if you go to Cincinnati, the thing is, is people will be like, oh, what school did you go to? And they always mean high school. Um, that was that's so yeah. on our list of questions rose it's it's we were gonna say how do you know if somebody's from cincinnati and then we were gonna say they ask you where you went to high school no they just ask you where you went to school and then oh. if you're from cincinnati you know high school that they mean high school mm-hmm. okay so when it's we just were, like small town vibes i guess when we were city. in when we were in cincinnati with the national team how many people came up to you that you didn't know and told you they were your cousin um, it only three. happened twice, but um, did it happen three times? Oh, oh I don't know. Honest. I was taking a guess. I, yeah, I'm just like from Lawn. Do you know this? That I, my mom's one of 12. So I have like a million cousins. And so I just have a huge family. So like, I'm just related to a lot of people. But like, but do you know people, all of your cousins? Like all your first cousins? I know all my first cousins, obviously. So I have like. 40 first cousins um but then there's like people like my mom's cousins cousins or like my mom's cousins it like kids yeah kids friends like and and everyone will just say cousin so like i like a lot of times it happens a lot where like someone will be like so and so said they're your cousin or i or i met your cousin so and so and I've ne- I don't actually know this person, but, like, somewhere down the line, I am related to them. Mm-hmm. So it just, like, happens frequently, and it happened twice in Cincinnati. So you just assume some, I, everybody's your cousin if they say, hi, I'm your cousin. You don't even, like, fact check it. You're just like, yeah. They'll, I'll just be like, oh, like, it literally happened the second I stepped in the hotel in Cincinnati. Someone was like, oh, <laughs> I'm your cousin. And I was like, you are? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, How? And then they'll tell me, and it's like, yeah, somewhere down the line, I'm related Checks to them. Checks out. Checks out. <laughs> Have you ever had it, like, not check out, and you'll be like, wait, I don't know Aunt Sally. Like, you're not my cousin, Ooh, you're... Good you're... question. Yeah, actually, just recently. But it was like, there was still a connection, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't actually, like, it was like yeah. um, a cousin's cousin. Kind of like a forgery, if you will. If that, it, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, what are, like, some must-dos in Cincinnati? Oh, my gosh. I actually was just talking about this today. Um, because people (laughs) always ask me that, and then I'm, like, I literally be, like, I don't know. Like, go to the mall. (laughs) I, like, I draw a blank. Like. What do you do when you're home? Besides hang out with all your cousins. Literally what I, what I'm doing right now. I will literally, I'll hang out on the couch with Wilma. I'm a creature of habit. I go get a coffee. Favorite coffee shop? Deeper Roots. That's a good Didn't one. Didn't you guys yeah. go there? That was Wasn't good. Wasn't it yeah. so good? It was yeah. good. That was yeah. good. I know. I know. Um, we were going to, well, two more Cincinnati-themed questions. One, about the horse carriage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lynn, were, you weren't there for that, were you? No, you guys are always doing weird things. Yeah, we we did a weird thing. A couple years ago, the national team was in Cincinnati again. And we were in this, like, area where they had, like, horse carriage rides. And around I was around the square. And we went and got ice cream. And then I saw we saw the horses. It was, like, me, Rose, Mal, and Jane, maybe. Mm. Yeah, that sounds right. Was that was Sonnet there? <laughs> no. No. Okay. So I got in this mood that it was going to be, like, so fun and, like, carefree of us to just, like, do a horse carriage ride. Like, why not? And so we, like, did it. And it, like, wasn't really that fun or that cool. And we, like, felt so weird. And the woman running it was kept talking to us but was taking us down, like, just normal residential roads that we were kind of, like... But she wasn't taking us around the city. She was, like, taking us kind of down, like, dark yeah parts of the of downtown that were like uninhabited 
Yeah, and I got <laughs> I got like kind of creeped out at one point. Like she could just stop <laughs> this carriage, and like anything could happen. Like literally anything. So it was like a pretty wild, not super fun. But I mean, I'm not gonna knock it. I it was it was Cincinnati. It was, now we have the memory. Yeah, she was and also telling some like just strange strange stories that were like mm, yeah. not yeah so things yeah. not to do in cincinnati horse carriage ride but honestly we bring this up three four times a year so it's it for yeah. the memory i would say i would might go on a limb and say so if if you survive the horse carriage then it's a good then idea. it's worth it yeah i think so i think that's safe to say then it's a plus um, yeah put that on yelp yeah yeah, fair enough. And then, Rose, the biggest question, I think, about Cincinnati is the national team just played a game there, and you scored the first goal, and it was, like, very early in the game, and it was very wonderful. So how did that feel? And elaborate. Take it away. Um, yeah, it was a very, very fun game. Um, first time playing in that stadium, soccer-specific stadium, so that was awesome. Crowd was amazing. Um, the game was really fun. All my family and friends and cousins and stuff were there. So I loved that. Um, yeah, it was a good day. I thought you were going to give us way more, but if that's how you feel, then that is how you feel. Well, like, what were your emotions? What else, what else do you, you want? Scored? Um, I think I was just like really smiley. Like, did you expect, Ooh. did you expect that stadium to be so packed like that? Or was that like shocking to the day, the fact that it was raining? Um, no, I, I did think it was going to be packed because the last time we played in Cincinnati, that it like was the same, like it was packed. And like, given how much I feel like the city has like rallied around FCC and has like really enjoyed the soccer culture, I was like, it's going to be a bumping crowd and atmosphere. Yeah. So I like, I like knew and expected it to be just like such a fun game, even if it wasn't in Cincinnati. But then obviously it being in Cincinnati. Yeah. Was- I, I will give that. Cake. I will give that to Cincinnati. Like the atmosphere in that stadium was amazing. Like anytime somebody scored – the uh, announcer, the way they would say, like, Rose, and the crowd was supposed to say Lavelle. Um, Mm. It was cool. It was a really cool experience. So I'll give that to you guys. Sam, what happened to you at that game? Oh, oh my God, Sam. Well, so I was at that game, (laughs) and I was in my, you know, street gear that I wore to the game because I was injured and couldn't play because my knee, but I was supposed to still be able to sit on the bench with the team. But the ref said that I couldn't sit on the bench which is like i understand was a fifa rule and she said that if she had felt she had to give me a red card for my behavior on the <laughs> sidelines that she wouldn't be able to because i wasn't rostered so she was like she can't sit here fair enough that it sounds like an, an actual rule it was just like oh okay so i had to go sit in like a in like one of the media suites upstairs by myself and watch the game um did you see, you so, the did you see her goal um no i did not I got in the elevator with Ryan and the crowd <laughs> erupted and I go, oh, I wonder who scored. And then I had to like go upstairs and like go on Twitter. And check. <laughs> but I was like literally so happy and like proud of her when it happened because I like knew how much it meant to her to play in Cincinnati. So I was like beaming, but I was alone. Like, I was, like <laughs> literally in a room like this size watching through the glass. And I was like this. <gasps> Oh, that's so sad. And I like actually genuinely was like so happy for you and proud. But I had to watch the game from above. But it's all good. Uh, Rowdy, Sammy Bonanza. But the memories. Again, the memories that I have with myself were great. <laughs> um, okay, so I think um, if you don't mind, Rose, we could get into some more real stuff. Um and so, well, this is not that that deep, but what <laughs> what are like you reading right now? Um, if everybody doesn't know, Rose loves to read. Every single time I see you um, have some like downtime, you're always with the book. So, like, what are you reading right well, now? Well, I just I just finished my mom's book club book. 
Um, it was called... I did not like it. Oh. I don't... Okay. Don't... Maybe bleep the title out. I'm, what if the author Rose stumbles upon it? Rose is so paranoid that the author is going to find out that she did not enjoy the book. And I don't know what the consequence of that would be. She just doesn't want to hurt their feelings. But she refuses to acknowledge when she doesn't like a book. I just Sam? bad. She wants, she wants them to bleep the title of the book out. <laughs> Sam, you also do irrational things. Leave her alone. <laughs> Right. I ask I ask them to bleep things out after every time we record. I know you gotta take that out. Can't handle a backlash. So obviously when you started with the national team, um, you were young. You still are young. How did you feel Thanks. Like um how did you feel or how did you handle the pressure after like the World Cup performance? Um, handling the spotlight. What do you do to keep yourself grounded? All of that figure out where that question's going and just answer it. I don't know. I always say, I don't know if you feel this way, Sam. Like, I just feel like after the World Cup, I I feel like I thought, like, you, like, you'd feel some kind of different after, like, accomplishing, like, this huge life goal. Um, and I didn't feel any different. So I... I don't really know if there's, like, anything I need to do to keep myself grounded because I feel like I, like stayed very much on the ground after that (laughs) do you feel so um, i don't know do you feel any like pressure either from yourself or from the outside to always play well or always i don't know be a certain way like is is there anything that you feel puts pressure on you i feel like i definitely do feel like pressure to perform and like live up to like expectations whether that's like expectations I have for myself or like other people's expectations like yeah I definitely like feel pressure and I feel like I use like my sports psych and like mental training kind of stuff to to help deal with it and like manage it all have you always used a sports psych or has is is that like more recent um I've been using a sports psych since 2018 when I was coming back from my hamstring um I feel like I was like really on top of things like from a physical standpoint like nutrition recovery strength building like all of that I feel like I had like gotten all of those ducks in a row and I was like all right I feel like the final piece is like when I step back on the field after being out for like almost a year I want I was like I want to not just feel 100% physically, but feel 100% mentally. Um, and so that was like kind of why I had started to talk to one. Um, but then I feel like, as I'm sure you guys know, I feel like when you're coming back from an injury, like I always say as hard as it is physically, I feel like it's 10 times hard mentally because you're just like, it's just like an emotional roller coaster. So I feel like really glad and grateful that I had like started talking to one because I'm kind of like I don't really know how I would have gotten through that roller coaster without my sports psych do you think that's like what has made your like mentality so much stronger is the sports psych or like did you already have this like foundation of like strong mentality before like I just feel like now like since the world cup this happened and um like you were this big person before but like after I felt like just from a social side like you blew up Mm. do Um, you feel that way at all or I um no I just like no like I just feel like feel like me like I don't know I don't I don't really feel any like yeah Fair Sorry, enough. I don't really know how to answer, but no, I do think that it has like continuing to like have that kind of like consistency and continue to like talk to her and work through things because I feel like there's always something that you can like discuss. Like, I feel like there's always stuff that I am like worrying about through or need to like work through. I feel like it, it's like a constant ongoing process process and journey um so like even after I was like recovered from my hamstring 
and like back playing I feel like I still like had like I still have moments of where like I don't feel very confident or like you have a bad game or maybe you have a really good game and I feel like talking to a sports psych and like doing all this kind of mental training just helps you not get too high on your highs or too low on your lows like I feel like my goal is just to stay like that or I guess like that I should say <laughs> this this is an audio but everybody oh, yeah. with her hand <laughs> she was going at first she was going flat across meaning she wanted to stay flat and then she goes I guess I want to slowly improve over time that was great Rose um yeah thanks. obviously obviously it sounds like your injury in, in 2018 is something you like learned a lot from and have worked with your yeah. sports psych to get past is there anything else that you look back on now and are like this act this was really hard like adversity or something that made you a lot mentally stronger I think probably like not really playing at Man City was definitely something that was like it was challenging in the moment but I actually feel like I was very consistent with my mental training and like I think I came out so much stronger mentally for it and I do feel like I like grew so much as a player and as a teammate too um so it was definitely like really hard like obviously nobody wants to be on the bench but um I feel like it was something that was like very good kind of in the long term for my career to like learn from and grow from I guess yeah that's awesome it kind of sucks sometimes that you have to like go through these hard times to like learn a lesson like why why I know. I know sometimes I think about it and I'm like it kind of it kind of sucks to think like you're not gonna never you're like you're gonna have another bad game like it's it's yeah. inevitable like it's not like Don't tell like me that <laughs> but do you, you know what I mean like yeah you are like you're like ha- we have a lot of years left of playing and it's like you're gonna have I'm gonna have a, a really bad game at some point in my career again <laughs> a real and, like, stinker Really and we're just going to have to deal with it. Yeah. Like, it's inevitable. But, like... Yeah, well, that is... just got to be ready. Kind of, it's kind of a good way of looking at it, though. I mean, when we were... When we've trained PKs in the past, somebody will say, like, well, if you when you miss one, you're statistically... Now you're the furthest away from missing another one. Which I, I also feel like is, like, okay, good to get that out of the way. Now I can make statistically, hopefully, like, nine, nine in a row. Um, say statistically again. Speaking of statistics, um, <laughs> did I say statistically a lot? You said it twice. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then three times and then maybe four. Um, but I think that's a good way of looking at it, Rose, actually, is looking at, like, the the valleys as, okay, well, now I have this, like, whole new opportunity to improve. I feel like going, I'm injured right now. Um, and I was, t- well, we were talking about this earlier, but, like, I've I feel like this injury has given me a lot of time to reflect on things but I realize Mm -hmm. and I've been through an injury like this with my knee before that there's so much room to like get back to being 100% myself but every step of that I can like learn something new and kind of Mm. grow as a person and like learn something about myself so seeing the lows as opportunities is like obviously not a revolutionary thought but it is I think really important in sports yeah yeah And I feel like it's just not, I guess it's like, we're going to have lows and it's just as cliche as it sounds. It's just like how you respond and like learn from it. That matters, I guess. Like I think of like when you have a really bad game, it's like you just kind of have to put it in the rearview mirror, learn from it and be ready to go again. And it's, like, not the end of the world, even though, like, sometimes it literally feels like the end of the world. <laughs> it does. Do you, ever watch, I, do you ever watch the film back and you're just like, oh, my God, what did I yeah. do? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> like, yeah. You're like, what an idiot. Yeah, what you, like, either loser. have, like... Why did I do that? You have, like, acres of space and you're doing wild things or you're, like... <laughs> Taking one touch and you're like, wait, could have driven to the goal. <laughs> I, that I hate... When, like, you'll be watching film, though, and the coaches are like, you see this space right here, you just got to get it there. And you're like, yeah, but there's, like, people in my way. Like, (laughs) how did you expect me to get it over the top of them? Anyway. Scoop it. Just scoop it. Scoop a dupe. Obviously. 
Um, um, no, I think that that is like super important to hear though, that like when you do have a low, you, ha- you, we know we're going to have that low. I think it's unrealistic to say like, I just will have my mental coach to help me never have a low. It's, it's like, how mm-hmm. do you respond to that low? And that's why you have, um, the sports psychologist and, and the mental preparation to, like you said, keep this level headedness of, if you have a bad training, you're just like, okay, how quick can I forget that and and keep going and have a better day tomorrow? And if you have an amazing day, you can't just say, oh my gosh, I'm the best player ever. You just have to continue to be like, okay, well, tomorrow I have to do it again. And so to keep this just mm-hmm. like level head. Yeah. It's like the... Um... I know no one can see my hand, but I feel like when I was like coming back from my hamstring, my, I feel like my highs felt so high and my lows felt so low. And like now, like with working through with a sports psych and all of it, I feel like it's like more like peaks and valleys and not like literally mountains the bottom of the and ocean. ocean. Yeah. Depths. Mountains and the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is a great way of looking at it. Rose kind of answered all of her questions as she was talking, so she's yeah, way ahead of us. And now it's my favorite part of the podcast where we just pepper each other with random questions. Um, Rose, we changed up this part of the podcast. We're doing a food version just for you because we know how much you like to eat. So I wanted to start it off by asking you if you could tell us your ideal day of food. And eat it. What would that look like for you? You know the answer. I would like you to share it if you're comfortable. I eat out of survival, not out of pleasure. So, so ideally, weird. I would just have like a coffee and dinner. What would you have what for dinner? dinner? I don't even. I don't even. I don't, I don't know. Don't even want like to think about it. To even, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, that sounds what if, healthy. What if we were in yeah, Manchester? I don't. Just to be clear, I do eat all my food. I eat three meals a day because I have to. Yeah. But I don't smile. What if we were in Manchester? <laughs> what What would you want to eat then? Um, probably like Rudy's or Pat's like an egg, Like an egg and cheese from Trove for breakfast. Oh, an egg and cheese or trove from breakfast, or the um, banana bread from Tack with the espresso butter. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So like you, so that you never like think about that again in your mind, and you're like, I'm gonna eat, like I want to eat that, and get excited about a meal like that. I do like want to eat it. Um, it's not like on my mind all the time though. Like it's kind of like, oh, I guess it's like ready to eat. Like it's, it's time to eat. Let me think of something that maybe AB could be enjoyable. Okay. What about like as enjoyable as it could be coffee in the morning? Like at nighttime, do you go to bed like excited to be like, oh, I get to have coffee in the morning. Yes. I do love coffee. So with that, what is your go-to coffee order? Um... Usually it's an iced vanilla latte, um, but I do bop around. Sometimes I'll just get like a coffee with milk or I like flat white too. Mm. Um, In England, the issue was they didn't have any, they like didn't have ice. Like you'd go somewhere and I'd be like, can I get an iced whatever? And they'd be like, ah, we ran out. They would just, they would literally run out of ice all the time like it was like and I was just do you like, have ice today what like you... we would ask yeah and I'm just like so what do you upsetting mean you ran out of ice like make some more it was we had a lot to learn it. we had a lot to learn in England we won't even get into the uh, washing machine situation in in Australia they oh, the wash, <laughs> Jesus we don't need to hear about that no um in Australia if you ask for like an ice latte it would come with um, a scoop of ice cream and not like ice and I was like, what Ooh. is this? I want ice, not ice On cream. the side or in, in, no, like in the in, coffee? In the coffee. 
It was so strange. I'd be livid. What? I know. I was like, okay, I guess I need to clarify that when I say I want something iced, I like want ice cubes. Ice cubes. Ice cream. I it mean, was so strange. that's really good to know if I ever go to Australia. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the worst thing I've ever heard, but also not. It, maybe you don't want that for breakfast. Maybe sometimes you do, but. Um, okay, Rose, what is your Chipotle order? Okay, bop around to that too. I either get three hard tacos. That's been my new kick. Um, have you guys ever got the hard tacos from Chipotle? Yeah, I used no. to work there. Oh my god. Oh yeah, oh, I used to work fact. at Chipotle. Fun fact. How good are they? They're delicious. I feel like it's an underrated item on the menu. I know, because I just feel like it's like the hardest thing to like make and get. You're just like, ah, bowl, burrito, whatever. Mm. It's just like, I, well, I always, I'm like a, a chip dipper with my, mm. like, I don't use a fork. Same. I just, I just use a chip. So then I feel like the hard tacos, it's like the best of both worlds. It's like a sandwich. Love it's, that. What do you like most? Nando's, Honest Burger, Rudy's, Biscoff Square. <gasps> the Biscoff Square. Yeah. All of these places were places in Manchester where me and Rose lived together. And I feel like when she wasn't eating with me and Pat, who would cook for us a lot, she would be rotating between Nando's Chicken, Honest Burger, and Rudy's Pizza. But then she also... And Shugo. We- oh, and Shugo. I forgot about that. That was bomb too. But then right yeah. at the very end, like we didn't really find this place until like what? I don't know, March? When we started getting these cookie squares oh yeah and yeah. rose was so I, I don't know what you were gonna obsessed. say they okay in england or at least in manchester biscoff is like huge flavor for them and they yeah. i it's so good yeah it's so good it reminds me of cookie butter from trader joe's so obviously i was obsessed and so they had these little like biscoff cookie marshmallow squares yeah it was kind of like a, it was like think of a rice krispie treat but it would be like hunks of cookie and marshmallow and like drizzle instead of like rice krispies right okay yeah they were kind so of, yeah. good <laughs> well i feel like what so i'm learning good. is like you're more of just like a sweets person like you just want to eat yeah sweets. i think well okay i've always been a very picky eater and then I feel like when I I didn't know anything about nutrition, like in high school, I don't think I was hydrated like a day in my life. Like probably until I got to college, I like learned that I should drink water. Um, and I would just like kind of eat like <laughs> I just would like eat whenever. Like it's not like I had like a schedule. Like I'm kind of like I don't really remember ever like thinking that pregame meals were that important. Like, because it was just kind of like I ate if I was hungry and that was it. But then I feel like I learned about nutrition in college. And then it like, then I was like, oh, geez, I have like a lot to learn. And so I don't like eat sweets as much because I, I feel like I ate a lot of that in high school. Because that was the kind of food that I enjoyed. But like, obviously, growth, we have to eat healthier, you know? You are growing as a human yeah. being. Yeah. Well, as far as sweets goes, I, I feel like I always do like these lame transitions and I just go, well, speaking <laughs> of this last thing we <laughs> spoke about, tell me about your mom's apple muffins. <laughs> that was my next question. I just did it in a nerd voice. <laughs> um, did you guys have any at camp? Yeah. I, I did not, but I smelled them and they were delicious. They were very good. They're s- delicious they're smelling. so good obviously yeah my mom makes these delicious apple muffins and she would always make them for me sunny and mal whenever she'd come to dc um so then my mom was really excited and i was really excited and we were all really excited when sunny and mal were in camp so my mom was like oh my gosh you guys all three are going to be in cincinnati should i make the apple muffins and i was like sunny and mal do you want the apple muffins and they were like yeah so she made the apple muffins, and I put them in the little snack room, and they were devoured. They they sure yeah, were. They were a hit for sure. So yeah. thank you, Miss Lavelle, Mrs. Lavelle. Yes. I mean, yes. Mrs. Lavie. Mrs. Lavie. Well, again, speaking of Cincinnati, 
what is your <laughs> I had to do it I had to do it late I know it was your question what is your graders no, order it's okay you take it away okay I did my graders <laughs> order um my favorite is mocha chip did either of you guys have that when you were there what I have had mocha get? chip before it's so good and then they just came out with this birthday cake flavor last year so I love that too mmm Okay, this is not a food question, but um, funniest TikTok that you've seen this past week, or that you want to do, or oh my god, are you are you guys on couch couch guy talk? TikTok? Oh my god, yes, yeah. No, what do you I'm not. Think? What is that, Sam? Sam, um, couch guy. He, it's suspicious. It's. I know. I know. I agree. I think it looks oh suspicious. My god. I gotta go find out what this ha- is, you have guys. Have you seen all the like um, people like making fun of him, like the remakes? Yeah. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like they all are funny. Yeah, they're hilarious. They're all funny. Sam. So there's this there's this girl who walks in to surprise her boyfriend at college, and he's like on the couch with a bunch of other girls, and he, there's he's like on the guys, couch with three girls. He's on the couch with three girls. There's other guys oh, yeah. in the room. Oh, okay. So do you? I mean, I've seen these surprise your boyfriend at college TikToks. No, that's not yeah, what I'm talking po- about. Uh, oh, well, no. it is, but it's like the the girl. There's this specific one, and then yeah. these people have like done like analyzed it and remakes. Yeah, so have you seen? She the basically first one? walks in the door and like surprises her boyfriend, and he then like they all everybody in the room kind of is like laughing, and he doesn't get up the, to the couch to like greet her. And everybody thinks like, that, so like, the I think, next, okay, the girl I think next I to have him, like, seen hands it. him the phone. Okay. I think I have seen it, but I didn't pick up on any of these nuances, and I clearly didn't, like, get, like, I just, I, I'm a little bit oblivious, so I didn't know. But I'll, I'll look back into it. I'm so embarrassed. Sam, not a TikTok. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm too old. I'm too old for TikTok. <laughs> Sam, what did you say the other day when I was like, what? <sighs> What did you say? Oh, I was like, oh, that's like hip hop happening thing going on right now. Hip hop that- happening thing that's going on right now. I was just that was the prank. Yeah. No, you were not. No, I was just <laughs> joking. <laughs> no, you were not. Um, this is time for our fan questions. Don't forget if you want to send us a question, you could submit. <laughs> Don't forget if you want to send us a question, you can sub. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> submit. You can submit it to Just Women Sports on Twitter. Okay, so this is a silly one um, from Christy N. She wants to know if you can give us some more dog content. Can you make oh my a gosh. promise? Well, yeah. I'll, I'll obviously we'll have to post Wilma's costumes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a, oh. oh. Yeah. So that's a big one. Um, yeah. That's something I absolutely can get behind. Okay. And this question is a serious one from Brittany. Who was your biggest inspiration and how did they impact you? Um, I, I feel like this is one of those questions that like literally in every interview I say the same thing verbatim. Oh, amazing. Um, but- Give it to us verbatim. Yeah, let me do it again. Um, so when I was growing up, I was obsessed with Mia Hamm and Christine Lilly and Julie Foudy and all of them. And I watched them play in Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati in 2004 and was even more obsessed with them and wanted to be in their shoes one day. And then also Heather Mitz. Um, she's from Cincinnati. She went to um, Ursula, which is like a, a high school that was in the same conference as mine. Um, so yeah, all of them. I was obsessed with all of them. Amazing. Is Ursula's mascot, um, Ursula from the Little Mermaid? No, but that's a great, that's a great, why don't you ask them to change that? You know what their mascot actually is? Tell me. Guess. Why would I be smiling like this? Bulldogs. Yeah. So you should dress Wilma up. In her Little Mermaid costume and take her to Ursula. It's <laughs> oh, genius. <laughs> Just saying. That is genius. <sighs> wow. Rose, thank you so much for being on. 
Thank you. No problem. I'm glad that um, we finally found a day to do it. (laughs) So are we. (laughs) And thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Our show is produced by Just Women Sports. For more great sports content, go to JustWomenSports.com. Be sure to subscribe to the newsletter and follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm Sam Mewis. I'm Lynn Williams. Rose, go. And I'm Rosabelle. <laughs> and you've been listening to Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what was I not supposed to say? <laughs> no, Lynn threw me for a loop with that one, too. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I thought you were waiting for me to. <laughs> that was so funny.